Fight fans all over the world, it's Daddy P with Slap Pappy Gorilla. What? Tim Zhu and Tony Harrison got it down. It was March the 11th, March the 12th in Sydney, Australia. But it was a premier boxing champions. And for us in America, it was March the 11th. And it happened on Showtime International Boxing. Lesson. It was a good night of boxing for fight fans all over the world. And Tim Zhu, Tony Harrison did not disappoint. Uh, well, some people might be disappointed. Tim Zhu, man, listen. Tim Zhu ha has made himself a legitimate foe for Jamal Charlo's undisputed crown. Um, he, he didn't land, you know, high percentage jabs. He not really a jabber anyway, but he did land 105 of 233 power shots for 45 percent that's that's very high for for landing your power shots and that's through nine rounds uh that's a high percentage but um tim zoo man uh, i could say he did uh it was a good showing of himself and he is a good counter puncher he countered very well and um he went to the body well, and, you know, he's the type of pressure fighter. He's not like a high-volume puncher as far as pressuring, but he is a pressure fighter in the sense that he comes forward and he's looking to place his shots. Honestly, what surprised me about Tim Zhu was his punch placement. He's pretty efficient with his punches, and he places his punches well. Um Tony Harrison, on the other hand, I'm going to tell you, to me, he did look like a shell of himself. Uh, to me, I mean, I see people saying, yeah, he, he used the jab. Well, he did, but it was only, his jab was only effective in round number one. Um, I don't know if it was something that um, Tim Zhu felt like he couldn't hurt him, but Tim Zhu kept coming forward. He didn't care about that jab. You know, he probably... Like I say, in round one, the jab was pretty effective, but Tim Zhu seemed like he was just trying to figure out what Tony Harrison was going to do. So uh, he didn't throw a lot. But after that first round, man, it was it got competitive ever since that the first round. And then going into the mid to late rounds, to me, it really wasn't even competitive anymore because I and I'm going to tell you this. I don't know if it was jet lag. I don't know if Tony Harrison has just uh, been in too many wars or whatever. I'm not sure. I'm going to tell you, Jamel Charlo touched on something uh, last night. He was on the telecast with the uh, guys from Showtime Boxing. Um, they were in New York. They had a telecast there in New York, and Jamel Charlo was there. He was helping call the fight with them, and... Something he said, he said, man, Tony Harrison never been the same since I knocked him out. And that that very well could be true because he looked like a shell of himself. It could, like I said, could be jet lag. I'm not sure. But Tony Harrison, to me, looked gassed early. Um, he had his mouth open in some of those earlier rounds. And uh, he just didn't, he was timid to throw. He, he was using his jab throughout some of the rest of the fight besides the first round but like i said it wasn't effective um i don't know if it was how he was using it but tim zoo just continued to come forward he continued to land power shots body shots um he was countering and i don't know if uh tony harrison he has a good one too but it's like i don't know if he was kind of tentative to throw his right hand because he was scared of getting countered or what? Because Tim Zhu was countering very well. And then he got a little timid throwing his jab uh, sometime. I, I don't know if that was because of the countering, but Tony Harrison really looked like a shell of himself. And uh, that was kind of disappointing to me. And his own brother and trainer even said, you know, it was on a fight height um, interview. He was like, man, I, I don't want to see my brother you know, in the ring anymore, you know, and, uh, he's been training, he's been training Baumgartner, the, the young lady, 
And he been training her well, must be, because she's doing very well. But I think his career in training, uh, he probably needs to focus on that more. Because, man, I hate to see Tony Harrison get hurt. Uh, he is uh, one of the favorites of mine. And, you know, I just I just don't want to see him get hurt, man. But uh, he really looked like a shell of himself. Now, it could. Like I said, it could be jet lag. People take that for granted. But, um, you know, Australia is like halfway around the world, man. That's It's like a total difference, not like a, a time zone a couple hours. It's like, like, you know, it was Sunday, you know, when they the fight was going on in australia and it was saturday night you know for us when we were seeing it so i mean you know that's you know that's that's a lot of jet lag your body has to get used to that time cycle you know what i'm saying and maybe his body just didn't acclimate or whatever and maybe he was a little tired from that and the reason why i say that too is because tony harrison usually have good footwork and it's not making excuses for him. I'm just saying he looked like a shell of himself because he usually is a little more active in the ring, moving around, using lateral movement. He didn't use hard, like any lateral movement that I remember. I'm going to go back and watch it again. But I didn't see him using lateral movement. And um, he stayed up against the ropes a lot. Like he was trying to counter... Um, like he was trying to set traps for Tim Zoo, but he just could not get off. You know, he couldn't get his shots off. So he was just along the ropes and Tim Zoo, that's where he likes for his opponents to be. So he, it's like he fought Tim Zoo's fight and he usually doesn't do that with fighters. He finds a way to keep, uh, his opponent off, you know, uh, kind of off his kilter by not letting him get in a rhythm to fight his fight. And he used lateral movement. He used, he varies his jab a little more. But man, what he was doing last night was not, it just didn't look like Tony Harrison to me. Um, I and, and, you know, like I said early, his jab was effective in round one. After that, his jab to me, it just, yeah, he threw it, but it wasn't effective. Your jab is supposed to, especially early, if you establish the boxers usually, especially boxers, the caliber of Tony Harrison, you know, they establish the jab early in order to set up things um, later on in the fight. That's why I say the jab was only effective in the first round because the jab did not set up anything for the mid to late rounds. It was not effective in him landing that one, two that he's usually able to land with that right hand coming down the pipe. Um, so the jab really, it, it, I mean, it was effective in round one only because, you know, he was throwing it and Tim Zhu really wasn't throwing. So, uh, but it didn't set up anything for the mid to late rounds. And it just, to me, Tony Harris, it just wasn't a Tony Harris and I'm used to seeing. And um, that, that was a little bit disappointing. But at the same time, I take nothing away from Tim Zoo. He did exactly what he was supposed to do. He came in there and, you know, he, he was focused. He was, he had a game plan and he fought his fight. His fight is a pressure fight. He's going to come forward and he's going to land power shots. And um, that's what that's what he did. And, you know, so I can't take anything away from him. But this is the thing he got. He started feeling himself. He knocked out Tony Harrison after the fight. You know, some of the interviews or whatever he was saying, hey, look, uh, I think it was in the ring when the guy asked him. Uh, what message did he want to send to Jamel Charlo? And he said, hey, the message has been sent clearly. And he sounded like Eddie Murphy. He said, I'm coming to America. So he sounded like he feeling himself a little bit. And um, But I'm going to tell you this, Jamal Charlo, man, Jamal Charlo is a whole different beast. And Everybody know he is the undisputed king of the 154-pound division. He is 35-1 and one with 19 KOs. 
he did that that one loss he has was to Tony Harrison. It was a unanimous decision in 2018. Some people, I, I, I have heard some people say they thought that Jamel Charlo won that fight, but to me it was too close to say that it was a robbery because Jamel Charlo, um, he did some very good work, but also Tony Harrison made a case for himself by winning rounds. He, he was in the fight the whole time, so... I can't say it was a robbery. It just was a fight that could have went either way. And Tony Harrison got the head nod. That was in 2018. But in 2019, Jamel Charlo did avenge that loss by knocking out Tony Harrison in the 11th round. Lesson. Also, Brian Castano in 2021. He fought Brian Castano. It was a draw. It was a split draw. So, and then some people say that they thought Castano won that fight. It was a close fight. So, I mean, it's not something that you can really, you know, say, oh, it was a robbery or whatever. It just was a close fight. And um, it ended up in a draw. But in 2022, last year, Jamel Charlo avenged. It wasn't a loss, but he got his revenge and he knocked out Brian Castano in the 10th round. And the thing to me that stands out about Jamel Charlo is that he continues. He keeps his power throughout the fight. He knocked out Tony Harrison in the 11th round. He knocked out Brian Castano in the 10th round. That shows you, man, hey, this guy is a highly conditioned athlete and he is ready to go all 12 rounds and holds his power. Lesson, Jamel Charlo is a different beast than Tony Harrison. He is a, I guess you would say a boxer puncher. He is very fundamentally sound, but he has power and he is very aggressive when he wants to be. Sometimes, and, and you know, he's the type of guy, man, look, he can box you. He can fight on the inside. Or he can just, you know, come after you, you know. But he is a totally different beast. So you got to be careful when, you know, when you're mouthing off at the 154-pound King Jamel Charlo. But, hey, I take nothing from Tim Zhu. It was his night last night. So my hat's off to him. But, hey, man, when you come to America, man, Jamel Charlo is a different beast. Um, and Jamel Charlo said as much on the uh, telecast with the Showtime guys, you know, Brian Custer and all them guys. Um, it was a real it, it was it was it was a real good little telecast, you know, them, them calling the fight and, you know, Jamel Charlo being there. He, he reminded he said, hey, man, I'm I'm not Tony Harrison, you know. He said, what I'm able to do in the ring will cause fighters to do something totally different than, you know, what he just had saw. You know, he, he was just letting them know that, hey, when I come in the ring, it's going to be totally different. But, hey, man, this is this is Daddy P with Slap Happy Gorilla. Go ahead and slap that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time it go down. More content to come. We got some very good fights coming up this year. And I'm going to tell you, this, this is going to be one of them probably later on in the year. Jamel Charlo and Tim Zhu. But uh, we got some good fights coming this month. Um, and I can't wait to put out some content. Y'all go ahead and, um, like I said, hit that bell icon. You don't want to miss it. This Daddy P signing off.